All right, so, funny story. Uh, something got corrupted on my original intro, so I had to improvise just a wee bit. But this episode is all about how to build the takeoff tubes or the Harley head flanges for the Evo engine so you can build your own DIY custom exhaust. And you're only going to find it on this episode of the Fabrication Series. Let's start with the tube. Now this is a piece of stainless, it is a mandrel bend, but I don't need the bend. I'm just going to cut the leg off of it because we need some straight. So any straight section will do. Inch and three quarter diameter is exactly what you need. As soon as you have that straight section cut, we'll get in and measure out five sixteenths of an inch and we'll cut ourselves some rings. Now once I have it cleaned up with the grinder, I'm going to go ahead and grab a hold of my tin snips. When it gets strong, we're going to split it right up the middle. I'm going to go ahead and grab a hold of the pliers here and kind of straighten it out a little bit because the tin snips tend to distort it just only slightly. So as soon as I get it straight back to pretty much even, we're going to spread it only slightly, just enough to get it around that inch and three quarter tube. Now I like to put the gaps kind of opposing side here just to minimize the heat because we do have to bridge that gap up and we're going to do that with weld. Now since this is stainless steel, we're going to have to purge it. So I'll pop a couple of purge plugs in, plug the line, get it pumping, and as soon as it's filled, we'll get to tacking. So I'm going to start out by tacking each one of these ends here to make sure that they don't move on us and then I'm going to build a bit of a bridge of nothing but build up. Now each side, I'm going to get in kind of close here and you can check this out, each side is going to have to be built up just a little bit of a wall so a little bit less heat just so we get a little bit more build out of it and as soon as each side is built up to the same thickness as the ring itself I'm going to fill it in with a little bit of a weave pass just to build it all up. Now I don't pulse much and you'll notice that the pulser is on here. So to minimize the amount of heat input and keep the build up and freeze that puddle nice and quickly on this weave and on this build up here, I decided to stick it around two pulses per second and only 20% on time. And this is the result that I got out of it after it cooled down. So it doesn't have to be pretty, don't worry if it's not, it's just, uh, it's just to fill it all in. So as soon as those two fills are done, we're going to actually go ahead and weld all of this. Now I'm doing this in short spurts and I'm keeping that pulser active at the same time. So the idea of going in short spurts here is to not cook the crap out of that ring that has to go on there. Remember that's only very thin stainless and it's not very thick either so it builds up heat relatively quick. So each time we weld, put a pass down on it, let it cool down, and then move on, put another pass, let it cool down again, and just keep on going until you're all the way around the tube. Now, do not worry if your weld does not look like this. It doesn't have to be great in appearance, it just has to be full. So the idea is to build it all up, and then we're gonna slice the two of them right down the middle to make it into two separate pieces with the welds basically facing on one end. So make sure you slice it right down the middle, and we'll get on to the next step. Now all of these need to be shaped and uh, set accordingly to actually put a taper on it, because we're kind of essentially making a cone. And to do that, we need to make sure that it's going to seal into the gasket properly. So first, we're going to take down that little weave that we just laid down there. As pretty as it was, we're going to get rid of it. And then we're going to face it off. The facing off is to make sure it's nice and even. And then we'll go over it nice and easy. Let the flap disc do all the work, not your muscles. And we'll taper this cone, or taper this end into a cone. And get it all nice and straightened out. And then we'll run over the top of it just again real quick. Nice and easy. Now the final step here before we assemble it to the bike itself, I'm going to go ahead and take a surface prep pad, get it all nice and cleaned off, and it's ready to go. Now let's take a look at the gasket here. You notice that it's pretty much a donut gasket. It's kind of like a graphic composite style with a woven mesh in it, but the inside of it has a taper on it, or one side of it does. And when you set that up to the cone, you can see how it's supposed to sit in there, and it kind of does move and swivel just a little bit, and it's going to be compressed down. But the way that this essentially works is you have a split ring that recesses into the actual head flange itself, which compresses and pushes that cone or that taper into the gasket to seal it. So as soon as you put the ring on the outside of it, and you slide the flange right over top of that, 
and slide the ring into the recess, you now have this ball and socket type of design that compresses itself and self-seals into the gasket. Now the gasket slips into the cylinder head with the taper side out. This is as easy as it gets, just get it in there and then we're going to install everything. Now when it comes to insulation, make sure that you have it tightened down nice and tight and even, so even amounts on both sides. And that will get you set up and compress the gasket correctly to make sure it seals off right. Now this is pretty much where you're going to start with or how you're going to get your standoff so you can make your exhaust. And speaking of exhaust, this is pretty much what we have that's going to be coming up in another episode, so as soon as that video card pops up, make sure you click on it and check it out because this is one seriously epic exhaust. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I want to thank you guys for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the Fabrication Series YouTube channel for more really awesome content. Check the description below if you need to get in touch with us, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.